Our world is not what you think it is. The standard evolutionary model has too many holes in it that it is absurd that we evolved from apes. There are too much genetic irregularities in human DNA to just say, it is evolution. Part 1 of this video explains exactly that. But if we look away from the standard model of reality that is spoon-fed to us from the moment we step into school, we find that our world is not what we think it is. We live in a matrix. That is, there is a system in place. A system that you are completely immersed in and cannot see past it. This system is designed to keep a small group of people in power, forever. And keep the masses ignorant. Keep us spiritually immature and intellectually locked to a certain level. When you rob someone of their true self and their origin, you can make them into whatever you want. Long story short, Adam was not the first man as explained in part 1 of this video. And we didn't evolve from apes. And we are not the only intelligent species in this universe. As explained in part 1, mankind was genetically tempered with by the so-called Anunnaki gods of the Sumerian tablets. For whatever reason, they came here and played genetically with the existing humanoid of planet Earth to create the Homo sapiens sapiens. This video will get too long for me to explain why they came here. So let's just focus on how they created this matrix that we live in. The two brothers, Enlil and Enki, Anunnaki royalty, were present on planet Earth to conduct their operations decided by them together with King Anu, the Anunnaki supreme leader. As the genetic modification operation got more and more refined, the Homo sapiens sapiens were produced, who looked very much like the Anunnaki's themselves. Hence the verse in the Bible, let us make man in our image and in our likeness, could be meaning exactly that perhaps. Since humans began to bear the likeness of Anunnaki's, the women became beautiful and comely. That is, the Anunnaki men began to fancy human women. Hence from the Book of Enoch. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied, that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them, and said to one another. Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men and beget us children. Book of Enoch, Chapter 3, Fallen Angels, 1-2. The Book of Enoch has been excluded from the Bible for this very reason, it talks about the watchers whose behavior was very shady and human-like. These beings were just like us in deeds. Especially like our corrupted ruling elite. These fallen angels of the Bible took daughters of men and impregnated them. This action was considered a grave mistake by King Anu and Enlil, who treated mankind as nothing but an impure race whose only purpose was to serve them. Here are the words of the so-called Great One in the Book of Enoch, possibly King Anu, describing this grave mistake. And though ye were holy, spiritual, living the eternal life, you have defiled yourselves with the blood of women, and have begotten with the blood of flesh, and, as the children of men, have lusted after flesh and blood, as those also do who die and perish. Book of Enoch, Chapter 5, Book of the Words of Righteousness, Verse 25. So, they wanted to correct this mistake by getting rid of mankind and the hybrid offspring of man and Anunnaki. But Enki is considered to be a benefactor of humanity by many authors, as he sided with humans. Thus, two factions were formed. The pro-human and the anti-human. If you read the Vedas of Hindu tradition, you will see wars spanning on many, many years. And Sumerian tablets also indicate major conflicts in ancient times. Which this conflict between Enki and Enlil also entails. The Book of Enoch further reveals how the Watchers decided to correct this mistake of birthing mankind. It describes Enoch being ascended to what is portrayed as a spaceship to meet God. As it is described in the Sumerian tablets that Enoch was instructed by Enki to save some of the mankind and specimen from the Great Flood that Enlil and Anu decided to bring upon the unholy mistake called humanity. This great deluge is an established scientific fact, yet how it happened is still theorized. Again, the focus of this video is to describe to you the origin of this matrix, so let's stick to that. Anunnaki's after the completion of their objectives on Earth, left us. But all of them? Nope. The Sumerian records and the Egyptian Book of the Dead suggest that some of them ruled here. Egypt especially is a great indication as the pyramids were created by technologies that we cannot explain. And the long dynasty of Egypt was the priest class left by Anunnaki's to rule with knowledge they gave them. The hybrid offsprings of Anunnaki men and human women were given key positions on planet Earth to rule over the various regions. 
As some of humanity survived after the deluge, and an agreement happened between the Anunnaki's and them. The Anunnaki's were obsessed with bloodline. So, they allowed only their hybrid offsprings to hold key positions. The royalties of the ancient world, and even now the elites of the world, are obsessed with bloodline. Perhaps that is an indication of their Anunnaki lineage, as they need to keep their bloodline pure to be allowed to rule over the planet. Anyhow, the Anunnaki's, and most importantly Enlil, gave us the matrix that we live in. The concept of money, kingship, royalty, and enslavement was his enforced ideology. Introduced to us, a primitive species. We weren't yet intellectually anywhere near to adopt such advanced and malicious concepts. Here is an excerpt from the book The Gods of Eden by William Bramley that describes how Enlil was ruthless in his measures to keep mankind under control. As beasts of burden, humans were brutally treated by their extraterrestrial masters. The clay tablets tell of vast and catastrophic cruelty perpetrated by the custodians against their human servants. Cold-blooded population control measures were carried out frequently. Twelve hundred years had not yet passed when the land extended and the peoples multiplied. The land was bellowing like a bull, the god got disturbed with their uproar. Enlil heard their noise and addressed the great gods. The noise of mankind has become too intense for me, with their uproar I am deprived of sleep. Cut off supplies for the people, let there be a scarcity of plant life to satisfy their hunger. A dad, another custodian, should withhold his rain, and below, the flood, the regular flooding of the land which made it fertile, should not come up from the abyss. Let the wind blow and parch the ground. Let the clouds thicken but not release a downpour. Let the fields diminish their yields. Let Nasaba stop up her breast. There must be no rejoicing among them. Atrahasis Epic, 2, 1, 21. These passages suggest that they ruled ruthlessly and were of totalitarian and authoritarian mindset. Thus, the primitive species with not enough knowledge fell right into their matrix. Namely the three big matrices on planet Earth. Money, religion, and the occultist of ruling elite. Money is deeply tied to survival. Therefore, it keeps the average person always in survival mode as it appreciates, is never enough, and artificially valued. Hence, the system promotes people to find jobs that are designed to always keep them hand to mouth and always struggling. As the elites know full well, nobody gets rich with jobs alone, and real wealth lies in the mind. Yet you are thrown into hustle culture to break your back for crumbs. Just like in the Sumerian accounts. The people used to serve the Anunnaki's by bringing food. Sacrificing animals and dancing for them. In order to gain their favor. And nothing has changed. Now the priest class, the politicians are serving their masters the same way. And masses are running around after these priests who do not have your interest in their minds, but their own. Thus, this whole financial matrix is a setup for masses to stay in the survival mode. And do not develop strong spiritual and mental faculty to manifest abundance for themselves and others. But you can use this financial matrix to your advantage to get out of the survival mode. All you need to do is stop playing their scarcity game and create more income streams for you than one. There are many opportunities in this financial matrix for those who have the ability to see it. If you are ready to make such a move in your life, then Masterworks is the perfect opportunity for you. Masterworks acquires art pieces that can't be replicated, therefore worth millions of dollars. And you can invest in a piece of it as your very own investment portfolio and potentially grow your wealth. As Masterworks has handed back over $25 million to their users last year and returned millions more just in the last few months, even during the extremely shaky economy of the financial matrix. Frequent collapses are simply the control mechanics of the financial matrix to reset people into survival mode. Thus, diversification of your wealth is extremely important. And Masterworks provides exactly that, an unconventional asset class that can potentially produce lucrative returns. You can choose from rare art worth millions by the likes of Picasso and Banksy. The historical performance shows contemporary arts appreciation, outpacing the S&P 500 for the last 26 years. While every one of Masterworks exits to date have returned a profit to their users, with three sales in the last December netting 10, 13, and 35% return. You don't need millions to get started. Masterworks opens the doors of the art market to all, enabling you to own shares in iconic works that have shaped the cultural landscape. Masterworks has done so well that they are boasting nearly 700,000 users and even have a wait list as paintings have sold out in minutes, but you can skip it at the link below. Financial Matrix favors the rich and crushes the struggling. So learn, research, and grow.
it is a touchy subject, so I do not wish to go into too much details. But all religions, no matter divine or not, have been misused and caused a lot of bloodshed. Therefore, it is the greatest mind control mechanism known to mankind right now, and probably the biggest most elaborate matrix in which we live in. In my opinion, the greatest most effective way to keep someone spiritually primitive is to give them some religion. As it gives you the whole roadmap and what you are supposed to do, without thinking on your own and without question. Indoctrination of the finest quality. And the consequences of such blind faith religions have been mindless bloodshed in the name of the Lord, no matter which religion you choose. As religion by its very nature, divides people. The oldest divide and rule strategy to control the unconscious masses. That I am better than him. Jews are better than Muslims, and vice versa. Race was another twist that gives account of this divide and rule tactic. And evolution cannot account for the 2% variation in various races on our planet. So, it was genetical temperance which resulted in different races of humans. Here is an amazing verse from the Old Testament that if you read very carefully, you will see evidence of divide and rule. And the whole earth spoke one language and used the same words. And it came to pass, as they migrated from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar Babylonia, a region in Mesopotamia and settled there. And they said, Come on, let us build ourselves a city and a tower, whose top will reach the skies, and let us make a name for ourselves, otherwise we will be scattered all over the face of the earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the men were building. And the Lord said, Look, the people are united, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will stop them from doing what they take in their minds to do. Come on, let us go down, and there confuse their language so that they cannot understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there all over the face of the earth. And they stopped building the city. Therefore the name of it is called Babel. Because the Lord did there confuse the language of the entire earth. And from there did the Lord scatter them abroad over the face of the whole earth. Genesis 11, 1-9. Here is an interesting excerpt from the book, The Gods of Eden, where William Bramley is quoting Zachariah Sitchin's book, The Twelfth Planet, where they are describing the above verse, which was in the light of the incident of the Tower of Babel in ancient Babylonian era. According to his research, Zachariah Sitchin, the word name in the above passage, let us make a name for ourselves, was a translation of the ancient word Shem. The Bible's translation of Shem may be an error, says Mr. Sitchin, because Shem comes from the root word Shama, which means that which is highward. Ancient Shems are the obelisk monuments that were so prevalent in many ancient societies. Those Shems, or obelisks, were copied after the rocket-shaped vehicles in which the custodial gods were said to fly. Mr. Sitchin therefore believes that the word Shem in Mesopotamian texts should be translated to sky vehicle meaning rocket ship. When this translation is placed into the above biblical passage, we find that the ancient Babylonians were not trying to make a name, i.e., reputation, for themselves, they were trying to make a sky vehicle or rocket. The implication is that they wanted to match the technological might of their hated custodial masters and thereby put an end to their enslavement. The tower itself may have been intended as the launching pad for a human shem. Now this is not to say that all scriptures are violent or detrimental to us. Every single scripture contains great wealth of knowledge. As all of them had some profound teachings in them, but may have been corrupted due to the passage of time or intentional malice. Or have been an amalgamation of various texts. Thus a collection of various texts, some profound, some disturbing, made their way into these scriptures. Consequently, in the prevalence of ignorance, religious text does what it has done in history. And still continues to do so. The ruling elite have been always occulting information from the masses, all the way from the recorded antiquity. It is a game of knowledge folks. The more you know, the more power you have. It is as simple as that. All occultists do is they hoard knowledge. And keep it in an enclosed circle so that they can maintain power. The book, The Gods of Eden, talks about the possibly oldest mystery school, the Brotherhood. The school was created by Enki in good faith to tackle the science of spirituality and to relay this information to the initiates. But later, it fell into the wrong hands as the anti-human faction overpowered Enki and his initiates. Thus, they infiltrated the Brotherhood and used it to wage wars and occult knowledge. The book speaks of how the Brotherhood has been involved in pretty much every popular religion and race movements. And have been manipulating behind the scenes, the masses. Wars are an extremely profiting business. 
Every war has been for profit, make no mistake. There is no justice in killing an innocent child of the opposition. You can read the book to further research, as it is not possible to explain it all in here. But to be very precise and concise. The ruling elite do not want you to realize your true power, so that in your ignorance, you can play in their hands. They are afraid of our unity. And the spiritual potential that every one of us possess. We are powerful beyond measure. But we are being made into tiny humans who need to beg God or government for crumbs. And our salvation is not possible if we don't kneel to the priests. Extraterrestrial mentions are overrun in all the scriptures of the world, and it seems we are not even aware of it. Who or what is Gabriel? Jinns, Nephilim, Elohim, the blue beings of Hinduism, the Greek and Roman gods. And who even is Jehovah, the God of Old Testament? This highly controversial deity is described in such words in the book of Genesis. There were thunders and lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the sound of the trumpet was exceedingly loud, and all of the people that were in the camp trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the lower part of the mountain. And Mount Sinai was altogether covered with smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke from the fire billowed upwards like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked greatly. Exodus 19, 16-19. And all the people saw the thunderings, and the lightnings, and the noise of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they moved away and stood far off. Exodus 20, 18. The Bible points out that no one was permitted to approach Jehovah's mountaintop landing sites except Moses and a few select leaders. Jehovah had threatened to kill anyone else who tried. Aren't these verses describing a fiery vehicle that is loud sounding and emitting different lights or lightnings? Could Jehovah have been one of the Anunnaki so-called gods? If we read the Old Testament and see the brutality in it, by the commands of Jehovah, we might be able to see it. That the behavior screams of an ego rather than an unconditionally loving God. The New Testament derives from the Old Testament. And Quran also continues to elaborate on a lot of the stories of the Bible, and especially holds Moses in high regard. Thus, Jehovah holds his status throughout. But Old Testament is further partially a compilation of other texts that goes even farther in antiquity. Like the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Hindu texts, and the Sumerian tablets. And all texts have some continuity in them. And describe extraterrestrials or otherworldly beings and great bloodshed in the name of God. I should stop right here by saying this, if we read any scripture from the lens of unconditional love, we will not find very much of it. If this video is received well, then I will have a good idea of the public awareness. Then I will make another video in greater depth about the links of other beings and our religions. And whether they gave it to us to spiritually imprison us or not. Now of course it can be said that all religions are made up and all these stories never happened. That is the extreme viewpoint of scientism or atheism. And the fundamentalists in religion will say that all the stories are true. The reality is never so black and white. It is always much more convoluted and intricate. Thus, you need discernment and choose your own conclusion in the light of the evidence you find. But here is a nice excerpt from the book, The Gods of Eden by William Bramley, that sums it up rather well. If we compare ancient and modern ideas about how mankind came into existence, we find two very different versions. The ancient version is that an extraterrestrial society had come to possess Earth and sought to exploit the planet's resources. To make the exploitation easier, a work race was created. Homo sapiens. Humans were treated as livestock and were frequently butchered when they became too numerous or troublesome. To preserve Homo sapiens as a slave race and to prevent future rebellion, spiritual knowledge was repressed, human beings were scattered geographically into different linguistic groups, and conditions were created to make physical survival on Earth an all-consuming chore from birth until death. This arrangement was to be maintained indefinitely for as long as the custodial society possessed Earth. In contrast, the modern view is that human beings had evolved accidentally from star stuff into slime, into fishes, into monkeys, and finally into people. The modern view actually seems more fanciful than the ancient one. You must find a way to get out of the survival mode. That is, stop believing in lack mentality. That somehow there are finite number of resources, and you must take from another or compete for your place under the sun. As if the divinity inside you, who is responsible for creating all that you see, cannot create more abundance for you. 
It is all junk programming of the system that you must get rid of to live true to your divinity. There is a reason humans have been locked into survival mode even after so much progress. It has been designed to make living on earth an all-consuming task, so that we never search for deeper spirituality. And to Adam, he God said, because you have listened to the urgings of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to, saying, you shall not partake of it. Cursed is the ground for you, and toil will you eat its yield for all the days of your life. Thorns, too, and thistles will it bring forth to you, as you eat the plants from the field. By the sweat of your face will you eat bread, until you return to the ground, for out of it were you taken. For dust you are and to dust will you return. Genesis 3, 17, 19. Thus this verse deserves its own video. But to cut it short. Adam was to work for the gods in the Garden of Eden. To toil the soil and such. Enki came in and told Adam that he is a conscious sovereign being, and told him the difference between good and bad. Adam became self-aware which the gods, and more importantly Enlil, did not like. They wanted humans to stay subservient to them and never find the knowledge of righteousness. Hence, do not eat from the tree of good and evil. This verse explains that gods did not like it, so they made living on earth an all-consuming task, so that Adam may never ponder deeper questions and advance in spirituality. A serpent is an ancient symbol used for wisdom and guardian. And it is found that it was the symbol of Enki as well. Anyhow, to break free from the matrix all you need is the knowledge of real you. Align with your divine self. Try to recenter yourself every day via meditation, affirmations, or just conscious practice of being present in this illusion. So that you are never too deep into it and always in your divine center. Stop believing in us against the mentality. There is no separate them in a deeper context. It is all you. And there is no solid world, it is all malleable energy. Thus, there are no enemies, except the ones you make yourself, in your mind. Become financially stable and diverse. Nobody is deep into the matrix than a person who is financially struggling. As this is the number one thing that the matrix uses against you to turn you into a slave, working for them for just enough money to keep on surviving. So, you must navigate through the financial matrix and use it to your advantage. You must get on the side of people who benefit from the system by adopting their techniques. The matrix has minimal to no control over the awakened soul. As the awakened soul understands that it is immortal and infinitely creative. The rules of the matrix only apply to you when you are not aware of your creative power. That is, you are identified with the limited human identity. Then, you are at the mercy of the matrix. To lead you to whatever path it may choose for you. A drifter, as explained by Napoleon Hill in the book, Outwitting the Devil. The emptier unconscious mind is used by someone else. Call it government, society, devil, or fate. Lastly, this is just the drama of this timeline. Makes no difference to the fact that you are an immortal, multidimensional, spiritual, essence of divine. And you are playing endless dramas in infinite timelines. The real you is eternal. Uncreated and never to die. Dreaming infinite lives. So, rest assured. This is all an illusion. A dream in the mind of the all. And the more awake or lucid you become in this dream, the more you can control it. Just like lucid dreaming. And just like your dreams, you are everything and anything. Playing infinite roles in creation. I highly recommend you watch these videos next, they will greatly explain to you the backstory of these Anunnaki beings. And what is God and how to connect with it. You are the essence of God and in this timeline, you are here. In this matrix. But now wake. So, awaken O oh immortal. Your time is now to reclaim your throne.